broadcasting live from our studio in Boston. Solutions Review is proud to showcase Next Thing in the Solution Spotlight, a unique online event for industry professionals. I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review, and welcome to the Solution Spotlight featuring Next Think. From our perspective, covering the broad spectrum of enterprise technology, all of the innovation available today has created a whole new problem. Many IT organizations are struggling to keep up with the pressure of today's IT environment, leading to misused resources, poor IT service delivery, and an IT team that can never get ahead. So today, we're taking you on a deep dive into a workplace observability and automation solution from NextThink called Workplace Experience. This is a new type of IT visibility across environments, so IT teams can see, diagnose, and fix digital workplace issues in this rapidly changing IT landscape. And joining us from NextThink to walk you through the solution is Catherine Dahl, Senior Product Marketing Manager, and Jordan Rosenblatt, Solutions Consultant. Catherine, Jordan, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Thank you. Doug. Well, I'm glad you're here because as I mentioned at the, at the outset, uh, I think we've all been looking forward to this uh, from the Solutions Review perspective because ultimately this is, a, this is a really interesting problem and that is essentially IT complexity has exploded, um, which is um, interesting in and of itself that uh, all the solutions have created its own need for a solution. Uh, and so there's a lot that uh, I know you're going to cover uh, and I'm going to let you get into it um, and I'll ask that you start to get ready. While I set expectations uh, for our audience on the Q&A side, which we'll come back to after you've walked through your uh, presentation. Uh, and that is if you have any questions, please submit them and we will bring them up at the end of the show. Uh, I'll take them. I have a few questions myself. Uh, and. And we'll get through all that uh, with Catherine and Jordan uh, toward the end of the program. But in the interim, uh, I'm going to turn it over now to you, Catherine, and I'm going to let you run with it. Um, I know there's a lot to cover, uh, and I'll see you uh, when, we're, when we're through with the presentation. Wonderful. Thanks, Doug. Um, so we're so excited to be here today and to discuss why NextThink, addressing the critical challenges in today's digital workplace. So really what everyone is here to see today is how NextThink helps diagnose IT's most pressing pain. And today there is a lot of pain. As you mentioned, Doug, providing support in today's IT environment puts tremendous pressure on IT teams. Many organizations struggle to keep up, which leads to poor customer experiences, frustrated employees, and critical business disruptions. In fact, employees are losing an average of 28 minutes every time they have an IT-related problem. Typical monitoring solutions that we see today, they have limited visibility. So to compensate, IT teams will expand their current support model by adding more resources or they rely on their employees to report incidents, but neither of those are sufficient. With budget cuts, it's harder to add more headcount and employees can't be counted on to report their incidents. A next thing study shows that just over half of their IT issues aren't being reported by employees, and 79% of IT decision makers agree that when IT issues are not reported, it always leads to bigger and bigger issues. So this visibility gap costs organizations due to their misused resources, their poor IT service delivery, and ultimate really an IT team that can never get ahead. So IT needs a solution that can help them see, diagnose, and fix recurring, increasingly complex IT issues once and for all. And that's why we're here today. Um, so Jordan, as I mentioned, IT cannot rely on their employees to report their IT issues. Certainly as an employee, I'm guilty of that myself. <laughs> um, so in the absence of a service desk ticket, how can IT proactively resolve issues without relying on employees to report them? We'd love for you to kind of walk us through that now. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking, Catherine. And there's a multitude of ways in the product that we enable this. Um, but one of the main ways that we do this is through what we call alerting. So we're monitoring the entire environment, the endpoints, um, and looking at what's happening on those devices and want to surface up information to you that is relevant to ongoing issues that maybe users are not reporting. And so you can get ahead of them quickly, 
resolve them before it causes an experience issue or a productivity issue. Um, and so you can see on your screen here, we can list out all the different things going on in your environment and we can set different categorizations to them as well. So uh, understanding if it's a critical, a high, a medium or a low, we track that over time. All the various applications or any of the data points that are available in Nextin can be listed here as an alert. And um, to kind of showcase the example of how you use this information to get to a resolution, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our security agent that's crashing in our environment right now. So you can see here we have an alert. It's a critical alert because it's a security agent. We want to be able um, to be ahead of that as that keeps our devices secure. And we see that in the last 24 hours, there was 14 crashes on these devices. And if I drop this down, I'll be able to see all the impacted people in that, in that alert. Um, and I can really easily get into that device by clicking on that. And it's going to pull up what we call the device timeline. And this is um, our look at what is going on on that device over time. Because as we know, users aren't going to call in right as they have an issue, if at all. And then something like a security agent, they're not going to call at all. Um, so we can see what was going on on that device over time. We track a, a many different things around performance and applications. Um, but here we can see that alert um, is listed and we see when that period was going on. And we also see here that the crash occurred at that same time. And when we click on this, we can get some information about that crash. So what binary was it? What version is it? How many times did it crash? Um, and that's really great for one-to-one. -one, but if we're talking about proactivity, how widespread is this? Do you need to prioritize this problem? Is this a big issue? And we can really easily transition to that by clicking on this troubleshoot execution crashes. And this is going to bring us right into what we call our diagnostics page. And the diagnostics page provides a lot of insight on understanding the true impact of a problem. Um, so you can immediately see, even though in the last 24 hours, we only had 14 people have that issue, it's actually impacting 75 devices over the last seven days. Um, we track that over time. So we can see that spike started um, a few days ago. And we're even comparing this to other NextThink customers. So if you are wondering, well, okay, it's crashing, is that normal? You can actually compare yourself to what that benchmark is for other companies using our product. And here we see the benchmark is 2%, uh, but you're at 15%. So this is obviously very um, something that's related to your environment. We give you many different ways to break down this data. So you can see we can break down by country, state. Um, we can do this by operating system and platform. So different ways to break up that data to try and understand the correlation. And we'll even use machine learning here on the right side, you can see where we'll tell you where what's relevant to this problem. And in our case, we see here that there's an unstable version in the environment, right? This 6.37, um, it's having the most issues. And based on what we're seeing in your environment, you have a more stable version that you should upgrade them to. So we can see that details and we even break down version by version what other companies are seeing. And then it's really good to have this information, but being able to take action against that is something that NextThink prioritizes as well. So we want you to be able to resolve this easily. So by clicking on this list of devices, you can easily see all the people impacted by that problem and even select them as soon as it loads. Um, select them to for remediation, all of them or some of them, right? If I click on one here, uh, you'll see I have this execute action. And here I can go forward with a remediation that's built by the engineering team that allows them to do that and go run it on that device. And here you can see that agent um, MSI, there's different parameters that can be put in if that's what the engineering team wants and allows you to easily solve this problem before users even start calling about it. Amazing, Jordan. And then that's just a great first example of how NextThink enables IT to proactively identify these employee experience issues before they become these massive IT problems. And that was a wonderful walkthrough of how IT teams can diagnose the context, scope, and impact to fix them for every affected employee, not just the one that maybe raised their hand. Um, now, something we hear from our customers is how to get ahead of issues before they become wide-scale problems, which you just showed with that real-time alerting. Another common issue our customers tell us about is the ever-increasing number of applications employees use, as Doug mentioned in the intro, that IT complexity. So 
In this case, IT is completely blind to the employee experience across all of these web and SaaS applications that their employees really depend on. In fact, NextSync did a survey last year that showed an alarming lack of comprehensive monitoring of web and SaaS applications. 83 of the IT leaders who responded to that survey said that less than half of their SaaS applications are actively managed. And that's a big problem. Um, so typically, IT is at the vendor's mercy for troubleshooting and remediation for web and SaaS apps. Um, now, Jordan, today, would you be able to show us kind of what visibility next thing can provide in this area? Yeah, absolutely. So if as part of what we gather, we gather information about applications, both desktop and web. And when we look at this, um, there's a few different data points that we gather that are very interesting to our customers and help them troubleshoot and resolve those problems. Well, the first thing is understanding adoption of those applications, right? So um, as people use these applications, you're going to want to know that high watermark, how many people are using it, when are they using it, um, are they running into any issues? So you can see here, um, just on those base URLs, we can see how many people have accessed it and when. And this really helps with license usage as well. We've had customers use this to reduce their licensing counts for their SaaS applications by understanding that high watermark. We even break this down into the individual web pages that are uh, used as part of that application. So you can see here like the home page, dispatch shipment page, um, and each of those have a different utilization and performance and even down into the transactions. So if we think about um, you know, the, the post goods uh, action within SAP or a save an incident, for example, in your service management solution, we can track all those individual uh, you know, transactions. But more importantly is we understand the performance of those applications. So as they're being used, what is that experience like for them? And is there something going on? Um, and we try to make that as simple as possible. So you can see here, we break it down to green, yellow, and red, good, average, frustrating. You can really hone in on where you have a problem. We also break this down into backend networking client. So if you're in IT engineering and you're trying to understand, is this issue related to the application or is it something local on the device, right? Uh, a lot of back and forth with application teams and support teams ensue because of that. We'll be able to show you that right in this graph so you can see um, if it's a back end time, it's the application that's the issue. If it's the network, it's the network team's responsibility to figure out what's going on there. And then the client time is something that's happening on the device that may be impacting that. And when you look at this, it, it does look like, all right, most people are having a good experience. That's great. And this is where machine learning will come into play is there may be a piece of information that's pertinent in a, a, a specific area that's struggling. And we can see as part of our machine learning that Massachusetts um, in that geolocation is having the most problems. They have a 67% slowness ratio, which is much different than the rest. So we can actually filter this dashboard down to that. If I go to state here and I'll select Massachusetts, all the data here is gonna update um, to reflect that selection. And now we can see that they are having much higher spikes in page load performance. And we're seeing that that's related to the network, which is interesting. So if the application team is getting tickets about this, we can assure them, hey, we're on it. We can see that. We know it's the network. We're working with the networking team to go figure out what's going on. And beneficially to that, as you filter this dashboard, so will the machine learning. And we'll see here that it's saying that Wi-Fi is the issue. 76% um, of the people on Wi-Fi are having a slowness problem. There's clearly something going on there. And we can go investigate this further and pull up those devices. And I'll be able to drill into that device back into that timeline to confirm what's going on. And in the timeline, we're going to see that, sure enough, they have this Wi-Fi problem going on. We can see the speed of that over time has been really bad. It's in the yellow. Um, we also can see a lot of different metrics about Wi-Fi. So what band are they on? What protocol are they using? Um, is there noise on the line as they're communicating? And we also see that SSID. And we notice here that this is our corporate SSID. And if we were to check all those other machines, we would see that that's going on. Um, and we see at the same time, it's impacting other things. So Zoom calls are in the red, their Teams calls, um, SAP is in the red during this time. Um, so we know that this is having an impact. 
And there's really not much you can do as far as uh, fixing Wi-Fi on someone's device um, from a, a remote action perspective. But this is where another feature of Nextthing comes in handy, and it's called the Engage Campaigns. So we actually communicate to users behavioral changes or outages, um, and we do that through these campaigns. And what you'll see here is um, as you send out a campaign to someone, it's going to pop up on their screen in the bottom right corner. And it's not something they can easily ignore, right? If you think about sending emails, it's really easy for them to, to move those into a, a specific box um, within their inbox and just ignore them or not see them. But this shows up on their screen like a Windows notification, notifying them of the issue, proactively telling them, hey, we notice you're having a bad experience. It's because of this. We recommend you do this, which in our cases, go into Ethernet or go home, right? Um, and so they can click that. And then all of those responses, the people who answered and who were targeted are all um, tracked here. So you can view that over time and make sure everyone got um, the message. And it's very targeted to the people having the issues. This isn't company-wide. It's only to the people having the issues with the Wi-Fi. Um, and that's such a great point, Jordan. Um, what makes the Engage campaign so impactful is that, and they see such a high response rate, is because of that ability to target and make that um, message very relevant to the end user in their experience. Um, and that example from end to end really perfectly highlighted the total visibility into all applications that NextThink provides. So not only performance, but adoption, license use. And we've seen a lot of success with our customers being able to save costs by looking at that usage and adoption, especially when it comes up to renewal time. Um, another big benefit we've seen with application experience is how to avoid that dreaded blame game. So in this instance, it was a Wi-Fi issue, but there is an application issue. And a lot of times the application vendor will say, oh, nope, it's not us. It's all green here. But application experience can actually prove that the vendor is the issue um, on the back end and take that to work with them to try to troubleshoot and solve. So um, wonderful example. Thank you for walking us through that. Now, Jordan, um, we can't speak about applications without talking about collaboration tools like Microsoft Teams and Zoom. They're certainly foundational to every employee and their productivity. Um, in fact, as you know, we prepped this demo over Teams. So I'm sure everyone on this webinar already knows that if there's an issue for one employee on a call, it's an issue for everyone on the call. And when, the, when there is a collaboration tool issue, IT needs to resolve it fast to avoid really an avalanche of tickets coming in. So for um, your next demonstration here, if you could show us an example of how NextThink provides that real-time insights to see, diagnose, and fix issues with Teams and Zoom calls before they widely impact a large number of employees, I think that would help really show how we could have that IT take that fast action. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, coming back to alerts, um, I just wanted to show this really quick that we also can see things about Teams calls and all that stuff in the alerts. Um, here we see that business application, bad call quality um, related to a specific city, right? So that's one way to be notified of this proactively. Another way is to use those campaigns. Um, so I talked about how you can notify users of stuff or bring um, self-healing to them, but you can also use it to gather feedback. And one of those that we've put together is this um, Teams NPS score. Um, and actually, I'll switch over. So. Here we can see that we, we have them coming back and, and giving us the feedback as they use that application. Um, you'll notice that it looks a little bit different than the previous one where um, we put this in the format of NPS scoring. Um, here we see you know, how, how likely are you to recommend it or to use it? What's the reason for your score? And then those scores come back. Um, and what we'll see is as they respond, we can track those things. And we want to focus on the people that are having a problem. So of course, we have 98 people who are happy with it, 80 that are passive, but we have 170 detractors. And when I click on that, it'll filter this dashboard again to what they are actually saying. Um, they're saying that there's nothing that they like. Um, but more importantly, we're seeing in the area that they work, it's Boston, right? And that may seem familiar, right? Because we just had confirmation of a Wi-Fi issue. Maybe this is also impacting Teams. So we can select these and we can see um, that they have the lowest possible score due to Teams. And another way to look at this data, so if you're the engineer looking at this and you're trying to understand what's causing this, um, another area that you can use is what we call our live dashboards. And we have one around call quality, a lot of these out of the box, so you don't have to build them yourself, this being one of them. Um, and we're gonna see when this loads that 
Um, in general, Teams is performing well, right? We have a 4.6% um, of poor qual quality sessions, right? It's not that high. Everything's kind of in the green. But what we saw was that Boston was the one complaining. So when I uh, filter this to that city, we're going to see this huge spike in a different experience, right? So they're actually at almost 80% of their calls being at, at poor call quality, um, which is obviously way above the, the norm. Um, and we can start to break down this data in different ways. So we can see things um, like the call quality details and what's going on with those sessions, whether it's audio or video call quality, what type of connection they were using when they were doing that, and even break into things like what jitter and packet loss was going on, what the round trip time was, and even frame rates. And then we can highlight areas that seem interesting or that to drill into that might be the root cause. And so here we see there's 135 calls recently with poor call quality. 129 of those are due to the Wi-Fi signal strength. And that's obviously something going on with Wi-Fi, right? Otherwise, we'd see a giant, a more spread here. And again, being able to easily get into understanding these devices that are impacted, getting that list of them, maybe getting that over to the collaboration team, or again, being able to utilize targeted campaigns for this issue, right? We had one around just general experience Wi-Fi problems, but you can also be a lot more targeted with the message and say specifically Teams problem you're having is occurring because of Wi-Fi and being able to pop that up to the user and get them through to a resolution. Absolutely. And I think now that you've showed the engaged campaign, being able to show um, a, an announcement, you're having Wi-Fi issues, take this action, but also collecting that feedback. That's really the nice balance of the solution where it has um, that flexibility kind of to see, um, see the issue and then be able to act on it. And I know, Jordan, a lot of the data for collaboration tools like Teams and Zooms, that data is made available by the vendor. But we've heard from our customers that they don't really have the time to go through the data lake to export the data they need for root cause analysis, especially with applications so critical to the employees. So I think that example really nicely highlights the benefit to having that data right at your fingertips and be able to do a remote action or an engaged campaign to really resolve the issue for the employee. Now, um, another thing we've spent a lot of time on today is talking about how employees don't report every IT issue, but that certainly doesn't mean tickets aren't being submitted. In fact, service desk, desk tickets are up 16% since COVID started. And what we hear time and time again is that when a ticket is submitted, it's already too late. IT feels like they're behind and they need to resolve the issue as fast as possible before it has that widespread impact. And in fact, over 70% of survey respondents reported that it takes their team between six to 24 hours to res fully resolve a single employee issue. Now, um, to kind of help with this, Jordan, maybe for this next option, could you show us how NextSync gives customers insight and the tools they need to resolve issues quickly without having to see costly and timely escalations through the agents? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for us where that starts is actually on the ticket itself. So mm -hmm. level one and level two, their job is to receive tickets and work those tickets. Um, but a lot of the issues around that is when the user submits a problem, whether that's through self-service or they're on the phone, um, they don't have a lot of information. They usually don't contact you directly when it happens. Their job is to do whatever it is in the business that they've been assigned to do. It's not to call the help desk um, or to work IT issues. So generally what we'll see is that um, we'll get some information. If you're populating your CMDB, you may have this configuration item populated. If not, that's okay. We can also look up usernames. Um, and then a really short description um, that's not usually that helpful. So something like my PC is slow. And we all know that that could be a multitude of things. It could even just be a user error um, in the way that they're using the device. So the very first thing that level one or level two needs to do is contact that user and take time out of their day. A lot of times that leads into remoting into their device which we know uh, is affecting productivity. So the goal of next thing here is to bring our data to the technicians much more quickly with pertinent information about what may be related to those problems and with minimized um, swiveling of the chair. And the way that we do that is through this uh, tool agnostic plugin that exists right on the browser. Um, it doesn't matter what backend system right now you can see I'm using ServiceNow, but it could be any uh, platform that you want um, that you're using for service management or even any web page that has information on it, it'll scrape that that screen and find that information. 
And we can see things like the properties about that device. So obviously like the serial number, which is always complicated to get, who the last person to log in was, when's the last time it scanned, all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, we get into the performance of this device through these checklists, right? And again, these are out of the box, nothing you have to create um, if you don't want to. And we can see that this is aligning with what that user is reporting. So they're saying their computer is slow. Absolutely, we see that their CPU usage time is almost at 50%. Um, we also see that they have 11 crashes going on their device. And then we also see that they have 96% of their drive space used up. And that's very clearly going to cause performance issues. And typically level one will remote in and they perform the same 10 actions and maybe they do it differently by tech, um, by technician. So what we offer is that ability to take action that engineering has designed the proper resolution for this. And they can go and easily launch that from within their ticket without having to get into the next thing. And we can see here when they execute this, it'll go run it up, run it on the machine. It'll tell you when it was it succeeded. And you can even copy these results into the work notes so that there's a, a indication of what you did, when you performed it, and what the, the outcome of that was. Um, and the same goes for those checklists, right? They can be exported and copied, and you can have multiple checklists here for various issues, right? We talked about the uh, collaboration tools. You can have a whole checklist just dedicated to that. Um, but the other thing is, so we solved the, the system drive problem, right? And that's great. That's increasing first call resolution rates. That's in improving MTTR but we still have the CPU problem. And that's where you can easily jump into NextThink right from that interface. And again, we're right back into the, the device timeline for this device so we can see what's going on. Again, we see these alerts and the errors going on. And we also see that performance that they were discussing. So we see this in the red here, all this um, drive space problems. We see that our remote action ran on this timeline, we see when that ran, and now we see that it's now fixed. So that's confirmation for the technician that can use this as evidence. Um, but we also still see that CPU problem. And when I click on this, we're gonna see it bring up the list of, of executables that are running on that device and how much resources is being utilized by that. And what we notice here is that zoom.exe is the big culprit, right? Um, that makes sense, right? They're on Zoom calls, but it shouldn't really be taking up that much CPU. That's kind of an issue. And this may be a point where um, you're like, okay, one person's having this problem. Is this more widespread? Is this something that we need to worry about and, and maybe create a problem out of? And we can easily get to that again by going into this troubleshoot next to that and bringing us back into that diagnostics view that we saw earlier. Um, and here, so we only had one ticket about this, right? And it's really easy to solve that ticket and move on, but there's actually 355 devices that are impacted by this. This is not a mere simple issue. Everyone else is just suffering in silence, right? They're at the water cooler complaining about Zoom and how slow their machine is. Now we can actually see when that's occurring, the peak usage of that, and even using that machine learning again to tell us what's relevant, that this specific version um, is more unstable than the other versions and that we should perform an upgrade. Um, we can easily get to those list of devices and we can send out that update to them directly again, using that remote action functionality and everything I'm showing you here. So even though I'm selecting these manually and deciding, hey, I'm going to go run this action, all of this can be set around a criteria. So you can say, um, if, the, if the machine meets this criteria, go ahead and run this automation against it, which in our case would be to update Zoom. And that allows you to find a, a problem, test it on a few devices, and then set that for automation so that your technicians and your people can be proactively solving that. It resolves it for everyone and they can move on and do other work. Wow, Jordan, thank you. Um, I recently conducted a poll in another webinar I was on and reliance on end user involvement was the L1 agent's biggest challenge. So the steps you showed there really highlights exactly how IT can use NextLink to overcome that. Um, and that um, was very impressive end to end. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so we're on our last demo here and um, we did discuss the critical challenges in today's digital workplace and how next thing can help IT's pressing pain through C diagnose and fix. But um, another thing that certainly comes up as we work with customers as they're on their jer DEX journey, um, they want to move away from continually reacting to employee reported issues and be more proactive and really start to deliver and measure 
and improve digital employee experience. So as customers are working with you to do that, um, how, what are their kind of steps there and how do we go about that? Yeah, great question. So, you know, ultimately the goal of this, uh, and as we talk about maturity with the product is you want to be able to understand what's going on in an experience point of view in your environment, especially if your executives and your VIPs to start to prioritize resources. And you don't necessarily want to look at all those individual metrics that we're tracking and try to make your own determination. So what NextSync has developed is what we call the digital experience score. And this takes a bunch of those metrics that impact the user's experience and rolls it up into a numerical representation of that. And that's tracked over time. And this starts to become part of your change process as things change in the environment, as um, issues arise, you can see what impact that's having to their experience. We'll also tell you how many people are impacted by that and how much time is really being lost due to that. And as we look at this, we can see it's breaking, broken up into various areas like the endpoint applications and collaboration. We can see that sentiment is also a part of this. So we talked about getting feedback from users. It's not enough just to see what from a hard metrics perspective is going on in the device. You also need to get their feedback directly, right? It's kind of like being at the doctor's office. Um, they can run scans and tests and blood work, but the doctor still always asks you, how would you rate your pain? You know, what are your symptoms like, right? It's the same thing for IT. We need to get that direct feedback because that completes the picture. And this allows your executive leadership or your management to then focus in on the people who are having the actual problems. So if I click here and we filter this down to um, just the people who have a frustrating experience, there may be tickets coming in or reports coming in for all these other things. So maybe people are complaining about Workday. We see that's in the yellow um, or Outlook. But really your number one problem right now and where you should be putting your resources is in SAP um, S4 HANA because that's having the greatest impact on experience. And if it's solved, it will really improve that. And so now you can, instead of um, guessing or waiting for tickets to come in, you can use this to drive behavior um, in your IT staff to focus on the proper problems and being able to break this down in a multitude of ways by the type of device, by the location, really helps you hone in on which resources need to be assigned where. Absolutely. And um, I think, Jordan, what you highlighted there, too, is it's really knowing what matters to the employee, what's impacting their day to day, their product productivity um, and really understanding that allows you to have IT to have the biggest impact. Um, so thank you for walking us through the digital experience score and how that's able to be measured and drilled down. Um, so that was the last of the demonstration we had today. Doug, um, we just walked through how NextSync delivers unparalleled visibility across all environments so IT teams can continuously see, diagnose, and fix digital workplace issues with the goal of optimizing productivity and cost um, in this, as we talked about, this fast-changing and complex IT environment. Um, so I know we said there's a few questions that came in during the webinar, and Jordan and I are excited to get started and answer those. <laughs> yeah, great, and uh, and I'm excited to get to them. But I, I actually I have a couple of my own right out of the gate, having just watched sure. that, and I think this is this is incredibly fascinating um, to talk about because you've got three moving parts kind of all coming together at the same time. As I was thinking about it, you know, obviously we talked about the explosion of the IT complexity, and I think. You also mentioned, you know, basically the transformation of the workforce through the COVID pandemic. And now you've got this, you know, very different hybrid in many organizations, very different hybrid uh, organization that has its own collection of issues. Uh, and then ultimately, I think maybe the most frustrating of them all, and, and I think Jordan, you mentioned this, it's simple human behavior, right? I mean, how do you get people to... <laughs> to want to report. Um, some people, you know, may not want to report. Some people may want to report everything. I mean, you have this kind of, you know, spectrum. Or some want um, to fix it themselves. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Right. And so that last point that you got to, Jordan, the 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 um, digital experience rating. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious how you how you how, how when you see folks kind of coming to this, right? And you obviously have lots of customers, but I'm curious, do they know they have the problem and can they have a kind of, do they already have a clear sense of what their customer experience is without even having it measured yet? Or are they blown away by what they see when they finally do have it quantified for them? 
Yeah, there's an extreme visibility gap in IT right now, right? Most work or most prioritization is coming through incidents and it's relying on users to report those problems. And we just know that people don't do that. So most executives and customers that we work with, they don't have a clue of what's really impacting them. They know that on their annual survey that they're not they're not ranked very high. They try their hardest to, to put in these IT services that they think are gonna help. Um, and sometimes that actually ends up causing more pain for the users. So being able to show them this score and using that to drive um, their decision making and the behavior of users really changes the game for them and really helps them understand which things are impacting them and which things they should prioritize. Well, and and, and so again, we, we do have a, a bunch of questions I want to get to, but Catherine, I'm curious about, about that kind of early stage engagement. Um, what What are what are you saying to folks as they begin to reach out? I mean, what is the, what is the message uh, in terms of how to engage and begin to understand this problem? Yeah, I think um, Jordan summarized it pretty well when he talked about that visibility gap. I think as you alluded to, Doug, IT knows their problem. Um, they know that um, they're having a lot of tickets come in or there's water cooler complaints but really they just don't know where to start. So putting the employee at the center, understanding their experiencing, engaging with them to get their feedback and really correlating that technical data with that user data allows IT just to have the fuller picture. And then on top of that with NextThink, it's not just giving you the data, but making it very easy to filter, sort through, prioritize, and solve so that we have the tools, whether it's sending up an execution or sending out an engage campaign to really make that data actionable and have the impact, not just for one employee, but all impacted employees. Um, so I think it's like a lot of times people, when they talk about next thing, they talk about how we turn the lights on and they're able to fully see their environment and under, understand where to go next. Yeah, so so uh, so with regard to that, um, one question is: is how, how would I how would I measure the impact of deploying NextThink? I think is 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 essentially some what someone's asking. Yeah, we we monitor ourselves, right? So you can see the performance of our application on those devices and what that's doing. Um, so if you think about that from a technical perspective, the impact of the actual agent and what it's doing. Um, we see that, but also you can measure the impact of the solution working and performing um, the actions that you've set it out to by those surveys coming in, by the, the experience score going up. And generally what we find is that the experience of users improves dramatically in a very short period of time. And that becomes very apparent to the executives. So the impact of NextThink both technically and um, philosophically, if you will, shows itself in in the the behavior changes and the improvement in productivity that we see in the co company. Yeah, for example, like um, we had a global manufacturing company and they saw a 78% reduction in crashes and 100 IT hours saved um, just from improving their automation and efficiency using next thing. So a lot of times once they're able to start building out these tools, they can track their time saving, which correlates to cost saving, and then ultimately with the end goal of improving that employee experience. Uh, um, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious uh, with regard to that, actually, that that um, global manufacturing company, um, who within the organization, um, Catherine, do you, do you see as typically the ones who should be thinking about engaging here. I mean, where are you kind of best engaging um, within an organization and who on the uh, on the consideration side should be kind of mustering together um, in advance of, of reaching out and connecting with NextThink? Um, typically, um, we would speak with like the head of end user computing. Um, they're the ones that are able to utilize our tools and see the direct impact in their day to day. And of course, they work cross functionally with a lot of departments and teams in their organizations where they the broader organization will see the benefit. But um, to be head of end user computing is our ideal um, customer profile. Yeah, and we should say that they typically own the solution, but 
what happens when this starts to get out in the organization and we see the data, especially you think about the applications and things like that, is this grows much more beyond those teams. And mm -hmm. we've seen like HR be involved and um, facilities. We've seen, uh, you know, networking teams and security teams, all the different departments within IT that have a stake in this, they will utilize NextThink and its data to improve the experience for their customers. Um, as well as the end user computing team, of course, being able to utilize the remediations to help solve those um, technicians' issues. Uh, so uh, another question, which I think came from um, basically the answer to the previous question, which is how are employee insights measured exactly? Um, yep, yeah, so that's a great question. And next thing, as we've talked about, it's a digital employee experience platform. So really, it's built with that understanding to start. So every functionality is based on the experience of the employee. Um, so this includes more technical aspects like the alerts, diagnostics and analytics. Um, but then, as Jordan mentioned, we have the digital employee experience score, as well as the benchmarks and the trends on the employee experience to really help highlight that improvement. And then on top of all of that, we have that engage campaigns component where we can directly engage with the employees to drive their day to day and improve their experience, whether it's sending them a notification about something being down, a remote action to improve their experience or a survey to get their feedback. Um, so by having all of that combined together, we're really able to have that complete visibility into the employee experience. Well, so I'm, I'm curious about um how this different, differ, differs from application performance monitoring. Um, so can you just dive into that a little bit? Uh, because I think there may be some folks who are looking at, at this and thinking that a, a, APM is, is, is kind of sufficient. Yeah. Um, so typically when we talk about APM, their focus is very much on the applications only and typically very much on the back end, right? Making sure that the, the web servers are functioning properly or that the SaaS application itself is functioning properly. They'll do things like synthetic transactions and stuff like that to simulate what a user might experience. But to be honest with you, users are still having issues in calling about the problem. And the application teams are struggling to understand what's happening on that local device. How are they actually using um, the platform? And why are they still having problems? And that's the gap that NextThink fills because we see more than just the application. We also see how many tabs do they have open of Chrome? Um, were they running on anything else while they were doing that? Which pages were they on while that occurred? Um, and being able to align that to the other things going on in their device to correlate that back for the application teams and everything to see a bigger picture of what's potentially causing that issue. So it goes beyond just the application and its performance. It's about that user's experience across all of the things that it's, they're doing at the time of the issue. Um, so... With regard to that, um, where should uh, where should folks start to go on the site on your site um, to start to learn more about uh, those differences? I mean, what what is uh, available to them other than obviously events like this, which we're happy to do? Um, but what what else can people uh, capture in advance um, by going to the to the next thing site? Um, certainly, yep. Nextlink.com is our website, and each of our products have a dedicated page with videos, case studies. Um, but Nextlink, one of the things we're most proud of is our customers, and we have a wide variety of customer testimonial, video presentations, um, case studies, where we really speak and drill down into our customers and the impact they've seen with Nextlink. Um, we have an annual event experience everywhere where we have customers from all over the world present. Um, about their experience, their best practices. Um, and that would be a wonderful place to start as well, just by watching our customers. Like we have videos up there of say like Honeywell and other customers where they've done a tremendous job um, outlining how they've used NextSync and what our other customers can learn. Yeah, and we also have tech cafe sessions. We have webinars. We have a podcast actually um, run by somebody in house around decks in general, not just our solution. Um, we show up at events for other vendors. So there's many ways to interact with us. Um, we have a community site where you can go see how other people are using it and their feedback on it. Um, so a lot of different resources. And of course, if you 
anybody wants more information, they can reach out to us directly and, and we can work through that. Yeah, great. I, I was uh, I was on the website earlier and uh, and you're absolutely right. The the customer list is impressive uh, and uh, and there's certainly a lot of information there as well. Um, I'm curious about uh, getting your perspective on advice you would offer to folks who are watching an event like that or on your website and thinking, I might have a problem here, I need to find out more about it. How would you think about them? You know, what should they be thinking about in terms of, um, you know, getting their ducks in a row before a call? Um, well, yeah, maybe Jordan, if you want to go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So I, typically what you'll do is you'll, you'll meet with um, our account team initially. And the things that you want to think about as you come to us is like, what is the things that are actually you're struggling with now, right? A lot of times our customers have very similar problems, so we can talk you through a lot of that. But it's important as you come and meet with us to understand, one, get familiar with the space as best you can. We'll, of course, educate you if um, you're not. And understanding which, which part of your organization matters. So is that you know, level one and level two enablement? Is it really about um, application issues? Is it about experience? Are you at that strategic level where you're actually wondering about, um, you know, how the experience is across the whole organization? Is it about hardware refresh? Is it about software asset management? There's so many different areas, but coming to the table with the, the stuff that is important to your organization or the things that you're struggling with really helps drive the, key, the, the conversation in the appropriate way towards your goals. Because as you can see, the, the solution can cover a wide breadth of issues, um, but the more honed in on the stuff that matters to you and your organization, the better that conversation will be. We have a question uh, that came in around user permissions. Can you, can you dig in? I mean, obviously there's lots of levels of uh, visibility that you wanna provide and maybe some that you don't wanna provide. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the levels of user permission that's avail that are available? Yeah, everything you saw is behind um, role-based administration, right? So you can choose what people can or cannot see, which actions they have available to, which dashboards they can see, what data even down to a location or something like that can be limited. Um, we also provide the ability to anonymize data. So if you're worried about security or people want to be able to see the data, but not the specifics around user names and things like that, you can anonymize that data within um, the application, it's very extensible and it's um, extremely easy to break up those permissions to best suit the needs of the rules that are accessing it. That's great. The, um, so, Catherine, tell me a little bit about um, the messages that are resonating right now uh, with folks. I mean, where, where are you finding traction what size organizations, perhaps um, verticals? I mean, where are you seeing people uh, coming to this more than more than others, or, or is it just simply across the board, certain types and sizes of organizations? Yeah, we're certainly a horizontal solution. So really across any industry, we're able to add value. We do see a lot of traction with organizations that have. Um, highly, I guess you could say like expensive resources. So like healthcare, consulting, um, where it's Im important that their employees are productive and up and running and able to use their computers effectively for their job. Um, typically for size of organization, um, we really try to make sure that they're large enough where they can leverage a solution and see the full value. So around 10,000 employees or more. Um, and where we see our message resonating is like what Jordan said, it really depends on their specific pain, but whether that's around having to do hardware refresh, software optimization, being more proactive, less reactive, if it's compliance, um, those are certainly areas as well as sustainable IT, green IT, um, cost efficiency in general, um, Digital transformation is certainly another area where customers come to us to have that increased visibility, mergers and acquisitions. Um, so that's why we really encourage people to get in contact with us and start having the conversation so we can really drive what would be the immediate value to them and their organizations. And they can learn from the experiences of other organizations like them that we've already worked with. Yeah, Jordan, I'm curious, uh, in those early conversations, um, what do you what do you hear as kind of the 
you know, kind of a, a repeatable pain point that people, I mean, what do you, I, I'm always fascinated by those initial engagements where people kind of know they've got a problem and, and, uh, and really are kind of opening up, you know, what do you hear uh, from those types of folks? Yeah, there's two main areas that we hear the most. The first one is always around cost savings. So IT budgets are ever being reduced, right? The business, especially in hard economic times, um, the first thing to get cut typically is your IT budget. And so you're being asked to do more with less. That means that your engineers and your technicians um, have to do a lot more work with less time and with less tools. So what Nexting helps in that instance is being able to give that automation, that proactivity to them, give them time back in their day to do the projects that they want to do. But also if we talk about like hard dollar savings, that's the hardware cost. Um, if you are looking to get savings out of that, we can optimize your refreshes so that you're not spending as much on an annual basis on those refreshes. You're prioritizing the right people. Um, same thing for software and things like that. And, um, and then the second area we hear a lot is just around experience, right? We Feel like they feel like they're really good about supporting stuff they may already have automation in place but what they're struggling with is on their surveys or, or on the feedback is that people are still unhappy with it and they're looking for something to give them the visibility that may be impacting that and that's where our solution will come in it gives them the ability for the engage campaigns to bring back um, that feedback directly in context to what they're doing um, and be proactive around solving their issues so that they can be productive and happy yeah, this has been great. I mean, I, I would encourage everybody uh, in our audience to check out Next Think, but also really think about this uh, challenge. Um, certainly as uh, competition increases for quality employees and, uh, and that user experience, uh, and certainly as the complexity of IT continues to uh, compound um, this is something that you're just going to have to deal with, and and uh, and and I think NextThink is really out in the vanguard right now of uh, of a solution like this. Uh, it's certainly something we've been covering. We would encourage you to go to Solutions Review and check out everything that we've been writing about, um, and also by all means go to NextThink.com and check out all that they're doing there. Um, Catherine, Jordan, thanks very much for the time today. This has been great. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Well, there you have it, another solution in our spotlight. We want to thank Catherine and Jordan for that presentation, and we appreciate your participation as well. Until next time, I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review. Thanks for watching.